So today we're just going to ask one little question about how it is one might structure or design an environmental regulation in an effective or less effective way. So let's say we've figured out we want to reduce emissions from power plants. We know basically how much we want to reduce them. The question is, how are we going to tell power plants to reduce their emissions? One has essentially two choices, and they're usually called a design standard as opposed to a performance standard. If we go the design standard route, what we are saying is, power plants, here's the device you have to use. We've done a lot of research. We now know the most effective way to control sulfur dioxide emissions from power plants, and we're going to require you to use this device, the so-and-so scrubber. The performance standard, in contrast, says here is the amount you need to reduce your emissions. Let's say 90%, 90% reduction. It may be that the reason we know 90% is the right number is that is the reduction you get with the XYZ scrubber. And <clears throat> in that sense, these two standards are identical. When you think about it, there may be powerful reasons for going the design standard route or the performance standard route, depending on the setting. Because think of how these might operate in practice over time. The general received wisdom is that in most settings, a performance standard is significantly better than a design standard for three primary reasons. First, if an individual regulated firm has some way of doing the same level of protection for less money, it's free to do it. Maybe instead of using the XYZ scrubber, I have an access to some very low sulfur coal. And I can use the low sulfur coal, spending less money than for the scrubber, with the same environmental benefit. Pretty stupid to write a law that tells the regulated entity you can't do the good thing more cheaply. We're going to force you to do it the expensive way. Second, and related, a performance standard creates an incentive to try to think of a cheaper, more effective device because there's always money to be saved. And really, ultimately, we don't care how you get to 90% reduction. We care that you do. Why stifle the innovation that might come from the performance standard by dictating a specific design? And the third difference is that you know with a performance standard what benefit you're going to get. 90% reduction is a 90% reduction. That's the case for performance standards, and it sounds pretty compelling, and one might wonder why would you ever write a design standard. The key circumstances in which you might is this. For the performance standard to be effective in the real world, you need complete confidence in your monitoring abilities. You have to know that the firm really is reducing to 90%. And for various real-world practical reasons, that may be quite challenging. It turns out measuring SO2 from power plants is easy. But in other settings, it's not so easy. With a design standard, all you need to do is one inspection, make sure the device is there, and you're set. And so there's an element of enforceability that comes with a design standard that's just missing with a performance standard that in some settings may make it preferable. So, that's the sort of question we're always going to be asking. In, in devising a regulatory scheme, what's the most effective way of getting to the predetermined end? And there turn out to be subtleties and, and choices to be made um, that one must always be alert to. And sometimes we are, and unfortunately, sometimes we're not.